Hey, I'm Joey Helms here. Let's talk about creative lighting techniques using a 4K projector and shoot something like this. So BenQ sent me the latest 4K projector, the HD 3550i for review and I asked myself how can a filmmaker or photographer creatively use such projector other than just watching movies. So I had a feeling and hit up DP Rob Gregory and he said, let's shoot a spec ad. I said, heck yeah, anything specific in mind? He said, how about soccer? You mean real football? Need a player though. I know, just the right guy for this. Call me in. Rob, do you think three red cameras are enough for this YouTube video? Why don't we get Patrick out with his Gemini as well? Yeah, I'm down. Guys, can we get started? Let's go! Well, welcome behind the scenes. So now we're going to talk about a few different projector setups as well as a few thought starters on visual elements that you could potentially use to project on your subject and also some tips and tricks and watch outs that we learned on our shoot today. All right, let's start with the obvious one and that's the front projection and there's so much to talk about. So in this setup, you basically project the image to the front of your subject, duh, meaning that the camera and the projector are both shooting into the same direction onto the subject. Now, if you want your projection to pop, have your talent wear a white shirt, like ideally a white shirt, it can be also brighter colors, but it should be also plain. Darker colors basically absorb the light and don't reflect it as, well, as much and your image faints basically away. This is also true for the backdrop. Now, if you want your image to show on the backdrop, shoot against the white wall, ideally, and also have your talent closer by so that, it do, uh, that he or she doesn't cast as much of a shadow. Now, if you want your projection to just be on the talent and disappear, shoot against the dark wall and have your talent stand far away as possible so that the projection doesn't hit it as much. Yeah, you always need a dog on set too, otherwise it would be too boring. And a little tip here from Rob. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that the camera and the projector are lined up together and the camera preferably would be a little bit lower than the projector. So the shadow cast by your subject will disappear behind your subject. See, that's as <laughs> easy as that. I take 500 takes and f up everything. He just goes once and that's it. Let's move on. Now, with front projection, the image choice that you project on your subject is incredibly important and you want it to suit your story. For our case, we wanted to create the emotion, the energy that a football player experiences through abstract art as well as through nature analogies. And a good starting point is actually free stock footage sites that provide photos and videos like Pexels.com, but we also use footage from, uh, from Getty. For more abstract work, you can actually create these elements in your computer, in your NLE or Photoshop. And the great benefit there is that uh, you can manipulate these elements right as you need them on your subject, live in the player. So uh, that gives you a lot of flexibility on set as you go. One thing we notice works best is if you use images with a, with a strong contrast so that the deep blacks actually help accentuate the brighter spots of the image and also set your subject into more of a spotlight. <laughs> oh, the pizza is here. Hello? Hi, Papa John's. Can you please bring me downstairs? Yeah, I'm coming down. Oh, thank you, thank you. All right. Bye. Very important. Always have food on set to keep the crew happy. Right? Yep. <laughs> it's pizza time, everyone! Woo! Woo! <laughs> So this is possibly the most visually intriguing setup that we're doing today and in person it's absolutely mesmerizing. With the back projection you're basically shooting from the projector right into the camera and have your subject placed right in the middle of it. In today's shoot we have the kind help of my buddy Zuma who is a model and I actually play football with for real. 
So thanks so much for helping out. What's your handle? You're welcome. My handle is Azuma underscore underscore. Check him out. Very important everyone, always Instagram story when you are creating no matter what. We'll talk about that in another video. To make the back projection and the light streaks really pop, you want a haze like there is no tomorrow. Yeah! You get the most interesting effects if you project an image that is simple, abstract and ideally has fine bright details on a back background like the matrix code for example. You can also play with blocks of colors, don't be shy, pump up the saturation and it's almost like a laser show. The key here is to just experiment and see what works best for you. Kick it, kick it. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> Luckily that's a crash cam, it's a Komodo so we're good if it falls over apparently too, but maybe not. All right, since we're all camera nerds, let's quickly have a gear break and talk about what we're shooting on. Yo, Patrick, what are you shooting on today here? Uh, today I got the Red Gemini and the DZO Pictor films, and then I'm running around with the Easy Rig because 20 pounds, it's a lot of weight, and uh, I'm not blessed like you Komodo users to be able to go handheld all day. I, what are these guys doing? They should stop fooling around. Like, hey guys, stop fooling around. Rob, what are you shooting on? <laughs> uh, we're shooting on the Red Gemini with a 35 millimeter Zeiss CP3 lens. And then I've got the Komodo with a Zeiss uh, 100 millimeter CP3 lens as well. Yeah, I'm shooting on the Komodo as well with a Sigma 18 to 35 1.8 lens. So we shoot on four freaking red cameras. Hashtag overkill. But if you ever wonder, as always on my channel, in the left top corner, I'm always referencing the camera and lens used for each and every single single shot. Also, if you wonder what, how we keep all these cameras in sync, make sure to check out my next video. Here's a little hint. And as always, if you haven't done it already, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And back to our regular programming. Now, the third option is a little trickier to pull off, but absolutely worth the effort. And that's top projection. Now, we have to work with a little bit of a shitty rig solution here by holding off the projector from the ladder because we tried, we were thinking about mounting the projector up on one of those beams, but we couldn't get the mounting solutions delivered in time. So, shitty rig it is. But for this one, you definitely want to haze up the room again because it creates this nice cone of light and use very basic abstract images because they also project down on the floor and make really like put the subject into a very nice interesting looking shape so definitely worth the effort and this thing is getting hot now ouch what comes in very handy for us in this situation is that the BenQ HG3550i comes actually with Android TV and Chromecast built in so at a push of a button we can just project what we have on our laptops or phones just straight on the on the projector and and have it thrown up. This comes very handy especially if you bring your projector into unwieldy places like on top of a ladder or so. Could be a use case. Of course with Android TV you can access all your favorite streaming services through an app on the projector and just throw it up and see, watch your favorite movies except for Netflix. BenQ is telling me that that app is coming soon. In the meantime, you can easily cast it from your laptop. All right, guys, that's a wrap in the studio. Let's go home and get cozy. Welcome to my crib. Come on in. Since we cannot go to movies these days, for obvious reasons, we just bring the cinema home, and that's just like that with the BenQ HT3550i. And I think the I must stand for Intelligent because we've seen this is a smart projector and I have no clue what the numbers are standing for. Must be some secret code I just haven't figured out yet. So now that we've talked about what you can creatively do with a 4K projector, let's talk what they're actually designed to do. And that's bringing our movies to life. Well, let me start by saying shame on me because as much as I obsess over capturing the best image possible with my cameras, I have been watching movies and yes, sometimes my own videos on a freaking 1080p TV for years. And that's because I've never pulled the trigger on a, on a projector because I've, I have a very small apartment and I've never really tried, I always try to keep it as, as tidy as possible. 
but I, I figured out a solution on how to bring a home cinema in a very fast setup, which takes me less than 10 minutes. So I got this projector screen sent by Grandview. Thanks for that, Grandview. And what I really dig about it, A, it fits perfectly under my couch, so it's hidden. It's super easy, super easy to set up. It literally takes you like five seconds, as you can see. And it doesn't wrinkle. And it has also, and that's super important, a super wide viewing angle. So if I decide to awkwardly watch from here for no obvious reason, uh, that's super perfectly fine as well and it comes in different sizes. I decided to go for the 70 inch screen uh, because of the size of my apartment. I just have, you need to have a certain distance between you, the projector and the screen and that just works best uh, from a viewing distance as well as I'm sitting here on the couch. So cool. All right, now that we got comfortable back to the actual style of the show and that's the projector that we use for our creative work and it comes actually packed with some awesome features. First of all, it's a 4K HDR projector with 8.3 million pixels and BenQ's cinematic color technology that covers 95% of the DCI-P3 color spectrum and goes beyond the general set rec 709. It really reflects the image and the colors as the filmmakers intended you to see. In fact, all units are calibrated in factory and they send you this calibration report and you can geek out on and it shows you just like how the calibration results were. Uh, because it's really hard for us also to show you the image quality because even when we are shooting on a freaking red, hashtag overkill, it is hard to see, but let me tell you, I'm very, very delighted. Though you have to keep in mind that the projector itself is not bright enough for daylight filled rooms, like mine when it's daytime. And also another downside, and it's like with every projector and due to my setup here, is that you definitely hear some fan noise when you're that close. So it's like a red DSMC2 camera, right Patrick? So as you may know, I'm a big Star Wars nerd and I've been binge watching The Mandalorian on this projector and oh boy, oh boy, did I have a tsunami of emotions and felt like a child again in the final episode of season two. No spoilers though. Actually, show me videos of Baby Yoda. So uh, this projector comes with a Google Assistant built in so you can ask big questions like, what is the answer to life, the universe, and everything? There you have it, it's 42. And with that, we will wrap this video. In the next video, we will talk about audio solutions for cinema cameras. So if you don't want to miss this video, click that subscribe button. Also ring that notification bell so that you get notified. Otherwise, YouTube will leave you in the dark. Right, Patrick? Yeah. Also comment below what kind of interesting projector techniques you may have used or what you would suggest we should do next time and use this projector for aside from watching Baby Yoda videos. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Have a good morning, have a good night, whenever and wherever you are around this beautiful planet. Bye bye. You mean, let's do it one more time. You mean real football? Let's do it. Damn, we need a player though. <laughs> I was like, Damn, he's coming back to me on this? No, I mean soccer. <laughs> no, I mean soccer. Need a player though. I know just the right oh. guy for this. <laughs> no, don't go.